Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to Octopus Deploy 2020.1. This is our first release of 2020, and I'm excited to share it with you. Our headline feature is dark mode, and I absolutely love our new dark look, but it's also easier on your eyes. This release also helps Octopus and the Octopus CLI feel more at home on Linux and Mac OS. And we've also added support for environment and tenant specific worker pools, which is a big customer requested update. Let's get started. Have an Octopus Cloud instance running with a handful of projects in two environments, staging and production. Also notice that I have dark mode turned on and it looks absolutely fantastic. This is using a custom theme that our team designed just for Octopus and I think the level of polish really shows. I'm a developer and I use dark mode on just about everything I can and so I feel right at home with dark mode in Octopus. It's quite easy to turn on, you just go to your profile menu and there's a new dark theme toggle there. Alternately, if you log in for the first time and you have dark mode set on your operating system, if Octopus can detect that, we will apply it automatically. Now, let's head over to our infrastructure area as I'd like to highlight a few updates. As I mentioned before, I have two environments and a handful of accounts and servers. But the thing that I want to highlight is my workers and worker pools. You can see that I have four workers and three worker pools, but really there's two that matter. So I'm going to jump into a work pools and we'll take a closer look. If you're not familiar with workers, they enable teams to move deployment work off the Octopus server and onto other machines running in pools. You can create a pool of dedicated workers that can be used for specific deployment work by multiple projects and teams. And common examples are database deployments or deployments to cloud services. In my case, I'm using worker pools specifically for database deployment work. If I scroll down, you can see I have one for non-production work and one for my production database deployments. When we look at our projects, we'll see that all of our deployment work is scoped to a worker pool variable. And that allows us to scope the worker pools by environment or even tenant tags. And this is a new update in Octopus 2020.1 that has been requested by our customers. Now it's available out of the box. But now let's head over to our projects. And the project I'm going to be taking a look at is Phoenix. If we head over to our deployment process, we can see it's quite simple. My Phoenix project is a simple website running in AWS and it has an RDS database backing it. A couple things I want to highlight here. The first is just to highlight our worker pool variables. So if I jump into my update database script step, this is using an AWS CLI script step. But the key here is that I'm specifying a worker pool variable, in this case, database workers. So if I jump over to my variables, you can see my database workers variable has two worker pools specified, one for staging and one for production. This update allows you to better control where your deployment work happens, and it can aid in scalability and flexibility. Another thing that I wanted to highlight here is that both of these steps are running on Linux machines. And the first step is an AWS CLI script step, and it's executing on a Linux worker running Ubuntu. Now, previously, all of our AWS steps were artificially limited to running on Windows machines. But thankfully, this update removes that restriction. The vast majority of our cloud steps are now truly cross-platform. All of the AWS steps are now cross-platform and most of our Azure steps are cross-platform with the exception of our Azure Web App, Service Fabric, and Cloud Service steps. The cool thing that I'd like to highlight is our updated Octopus CLI, which is now more flexible in that it's available for Homebrew on Mac OS and APT and Yum for Linux. So you can now go to octopus.com slash download slash octopus CLI and you can see all the options to be able to download and install our CLI. On Windows, I'm a big fan of chocolatey, but now we have options for macOS, Linux, Docker, and we still have compatibility with .NET Core 2.0. I'm going to install the Octopus CLI via Homebrew on my Mac and then we'll create a release and deploy it from the command line. I'm just going to copy these two commands. I'll jump over to my terminal. I'm just going to go ahead and paste. It 
So in one step, I was able to install the Octopus CLI and it's now ready to go. If I type in Octo, I get the help text and I can start interacting with my Octopus instance. In my case, I'm gonna create a release of the Phoenix project and deploy it all from the command line. So I'll go ahead and do that. So first I'm creating release and passing the server the project details. And you just watch in the background and you can see the new release has been created. There it goes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and deploy. So if we give it a minute, there we go. We can see it's deploying to staging and I'm interacting with my Octopus instance from the command line. And that's it. So today we've seen some great new features all in Octopus dark mode. And we also saw how easy it is to install the Octopus CLI on a non Windows machine. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below. Octopus Cloud and Server are free for small teams. So head over to octopus.com free to get started. Happy deployments.